Hello and welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to continue with our nonlinear deformer tutorials that we've been doing lately. To find the nonlinear deformers, you can go to Deform Nonlinear, and here it is a list of them. Let me break this off over here. We've already gone over several of these. We've gone over Bend, Flare, Sign, and Squash. If you want to uh, check out those tutorials, you can feel free to click those links to the side there. So today what we're going to look at is twist. So first I need to create an object to assign the twist deformer to. So I'm going to go to create and we'll use a polygon. Let's try a, let's do a cylinder. Okay, so with my cylinder created now I need to go in over here to the channel box and decrease these subdivisions caps down to zero because we don't really need all that geometry there and I'll increase the subdivisions height without geometry added to the cylinder it won't have anything to deform so I'll increase my subdivisions height to around 10 or so like this so with my object selected I'll choose twist options here in the options I'll edit reset settings just to make sure I have my default values and hit create so, you can immediately see these little green lines that appear at the top and bottom of the cylinder. Let me uh, hide the grid for now. And if I press 4 for the wireframe, you'll see that it actually has a line going through the center as well. So with the twist deformer selected over here in the channel box, you'll see I have inputs, twist 1. If I click this, these are the options for that twist deformer. If you open the twist options over here in the nonlinear window, you'll see that they're the same. We have high bound and low bound, start and end angle. And those are the same settings here in the option box. So if you adjust these settings within the options window, you're affecting future twist deformers that we haven't made yet. But to affect the current twist deformer, we'll, we'll need to adjust the options here in the channel box or in the attribute editor. There's also the envelope setting, which is added to a deformer after you've made it. And we'll go over that in just a minute. So first, let's look at low bound and high bound. Similar to the other deformers that we've already gone over, each deformer has these two options. If I go into wireframe again and choose low bound and middle click and drag, you'll see that it increases and decreases the size of the deformer all the way from the middle as the uh, lowest it can go and it can extend beyond the object like this. High bound is the same way going the other direction. You can extend the deformer beyond the object or push it down to about the halfway point of the deformer. So then our start angle and end angle will adjust the actual twisting of the object. If I adjust my start angle, you'll see that down at the bottom that it starts to twist the bottom of the object while the top of it stays where it is. I'm going to turn on the wireframe on shaded just so you can see the geometry as it deforms. So you go left or right negative or positive values to adjust how this deformer affects the geometry. And similarly you have end angle which will do the same for the top of the deformer. So as you can see maybe a cylinder wasn't the best choice to demonstrate this deformer but with the wireframes uh, showing you can see what's happening with the deformer there. Let's go ahead and delete these and let's try this on a different object. Let's go to create polygons and how about we do a torus might be interesting with my torus selected I'll apply the twist again now as you'll notice uh, the twist deformer attempts to center itself on the object you create you might find you need to reposition it like I'm going to do here so I'm going to rotate my deformer so I'll twist it in this direction so with my object selected, I'll go into my twist settings and 
you can adjust the start and end angle just like before and here you see I get a much more dramatic result so depending on how you position the twist deformer is how the object itself will twist which makes sense so then there's envelope we haven't gone over that yet the envelope setting is essentially a percentage slider an envelope value of one is showing 100 percent of the twist that you've applied to the object if I take my envelope down to zero you're essentially turning the deformer off so now the twist deformer has no effect on the object and you can increase this envelope from 0 to 1 to increase the percentage value of the effect that's taking place with an envelope of around 0.5 or so you're getting about half of the effect overall and if you increase it all the way to 1 you get the entire 100% of the effect so you can see that my uh, torus is kind of blocky and chunky through here that simply is depending on how much geometry we have available to twist if I choose my torus and increase the subdivisions uh, like this to make it more smooth then it looks a bit nicer so with my deformer selected if I go to modify transformation tools show manipulator tool we get some handles here that we can use to adjust our deformer without necessarily having to adjust them over here in the channel box if I click on this handle here I can move the high bound and low bound in and out on either side and then instead of a diamond handle like we have for the high bound and low bound we have these circles that we can click and drag on to adjust the actual twisting of the start and end of the deformer also if you'll notice down here in my helpline at the bottom left as I click and drag on these handles you get a degree so if you know you want to twist it 90 degrees you can use that value being displayed in the bottom left corner which might be kind of small on the video but it's showing me the angle of twisting for this handle here so right now this is around 90, well, 93 to be exact. Now, this one over here is at like negative 60. So, the twist deformer is pretty uh, simple to use. It's, you know, it's got some pretty self explanatory type of use. So, that's been essentially the twist deformer. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit more about the nonlinear deformers. We have one left in our nonlinear deformer list, which would be the wave uh, video that we'll go over next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.